a bottle of water here, and here's a glass, and we've got a uh, what do you call this? Bowl or a tray, just to make sure we don't make, make a mess here. Now, uh, let me just ask a question. Is the water inside this jug uh, going to fit inside that glass? Huh? No? You sure? You sure? This is full. Okay? We're going to try it. I'm just making a mess with me. Uh, okay, you ready? All right. Can you see? Yes. All right, tell me when to stop. Stop. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you say stop? Did you say stop? Who said stop? Stop. Oh, okay. We we'll stop. What happened to the water? I wasn't listening, I guess, huh? <laughs> All right, well, thank you. <laughs> All right. Let's turn to John chapter 20, verses 18 to 25. We're breaking into the middle of the story. A while ago, we had the kids read the um, story about Jesus Christ being arrested and how he was crucified, and then he died on the cross, and then he was buried, and then resurrected. After that resurrection, Mary Magdalene and some of the women they come over. They were they went to the tomb. They were, they expected the tomb to be closed. Now I I don't know why they didn't bring any any male person with them any man because there was a heavy stone in front of the tomb and they were just asking so how are you how are we going to move that stone they were walking on their way well they got there they find that the stone had been moved right the stone had been moved and this morning if you woke up early uh, before the sunrise you probably remember that at that time jesus christ two thousand years ago Jesus Christ walked out of that tomb. The, the stone had been moved. The angels were there. He walked out of the tomb. And then Mary, who decided to stay behind, actually, actually the, the women left. If you put all the Gospels together, the women left except for Mary. And Mary was crying, weeping that Jesus was not there anymore teacher was gone. His body was gone. She walks inside the tomb crying and then he saw some angels and the angels said, hey he's not here, he is risen. But she could not believe that and then someone stood behind her and said, what are you looking for? And Mary turned around did not recognize Jesus he said, hey, if you're the gardener and you took his body, please tell me and I'll go pick him up and return the body over to the tomb. And then Jesus says the magic word, calls her name Mary. Now Mary has this conversation with Jesus and Jesus says, hey, don't hold on to me. I still have to go to the Father, to my Father and your father, for the first time Jesus says it's my father and your father. He used to just say my father. He says your father. And he says, I'm going to my God and your God. And so Mary runs back to the, to the disciples. And we break into the story in verse 18. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. She shouts, and she told them that he had said these things to her. Verse 19. On the evening of that first day, so that was Sunday, the first day of the week. On the evening of that first day, that will be later on today. When the disciples were together, with the doors locked. Why were the doors locked? 
What was going on in the disciples' head? Fear. Fear, that's right. They were in fear. With the door slapped for fear of who? The Jewish and who were the Jewish leaders? Pharisees and Sadducees. And what were those? Oh, those were religious sects. Right? It's amazing how the disciples were afraid of religious leaders. They were not afraid of the Romans. They were not afraid of the government. They were afraid of religious leaders. So, when the doors were locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And maybe Jesus was one of those uh, hippies. He says, Peace be with you. And you're supposed to laugh. Verse 20, after he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were, what happened to the disciples? What, how did they feel about this? They were overjoyed, right? To, to tell the person next to you, overjoyed. We're going to focus on that word for a while. See, the disciples were following fear of the religious leaders. They were in despair. They were sad. They were surprised that Jesus, who was supposed to be the Messiah, their teacher, who was supposed to lead them into freedom from Rome, suddenly, he was dead. Now, how would you feel if you were there? You were one of the disciples, and you were hoping that Jesus would save you, save the whole Israel. After all, how many did he, did he appoint as his disciples? Twelve, right? And how many tribes were there? There were twelve tribes, right? Actually, there were thirteen, but twelve um, geographic tribes. They had their particular regions that they were over. There were twelve tribes. There were twelve disciples. And now they find that the king that they had hoped for suddenly got who killed them? The religious leaders had the Roman soldiers kill him. And just feel that pain that the disciples had. Verse 21. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Verse 22. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Now, did the disciples receive the Holy Spirit before this time? Not really. It was not until Jesus was crucified died, was in the tomb for three days and three nights, and then he resurrected. Now he comes to the disciples and says, receive the Holy Spirit. How many of us like that? Yeah. Receive the Holy Spirit. In verse 23, if you forgive anyone's sins, sorry, Verse 23, if you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now what happened was, here were the 11 minus, this was 12 minus 1. Who was that? Thomas. 12, that's right. There were 11 minus another one. Yeah, there were two missing. There were 12 of them, there were two missing. Who, who were the two? Judas, that's right, he betrayed and then killed himself. And the other one was Thomas. Thomas is named, otherwise he's, he's known, he's called Didymus, which means twin. Actually what that means is double-minded. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So Jesus showed himself to the twelve, minus the two, ten. And they saw Jesus. 
And then, after this story, in verse 25, so the other disciples, when Thomas eventually came, they said, hey, we have seen the Lord. And the Lord of joy. What does overjoy mean? Do you know what overjoy means? What happened? <laughs> Extra happy? Why? Why were you overjoyed? Something good happened, right? The <laughs> women, when you finally gave birth to your children, you were overjoyed, right? You were over all that pain and agony and suffering for how many hours? Well, for some of you, probably just a split second because the doctor just went like this. <laughs> but my wife, when she gave birth to our first child, she had four normal deliveries. The first child was the hardest one because she labored for how long? 16 hours. <laughs> He birthed at home. Natural childbirth. Not nine months carrying the baby and then 16 hours of labor. And I was there wondering how is this guy going to come out? <laughs> and, the, and the thing was, the midwife said, well, the problem is this guy inside, this baby inside, has got the cord wrapped around his neck, right? And then he, she had to massage and do something, manipulate the baby inside so that he would come out and not get killed in the process. Overjoyed, right? When you've been looking for a job for 10 years and finally you get one, right? When you've been struggling over something and finally God gives you the answer, right? When you've been sick for 10 years and then suddenly God heals you. Overjoy, right? Who wants to feel that overjoy right now? Who doesn't, right? Now, please raise your hand if you don't want to be overjoyed. You don't want to be overjoyed? I want to be overjoyed. I don't know if there's a noun that says, that, that a noun uh, that says overjoy. Is there a noun? Or is it just a, a, an adjective? Overjoy. Huh? It's just an adjective? Let, let's, let's change Miriam. Let's, let's, let's change the dictionary. Let's call it overjoy the noun. Right? Overjoy. I want, I want to have overjoy. And you know what? This kind of joy that God wants to give us is an overflowing kind of joy. <clears throat> it's an overflowing kind of joy. Right? You remember this little... Oh, what did I do? Water here overflow, right? Because there's too much. Too much joy. Let it flow. Let it flow. That's right. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This is us. That's you. That's me. That little glass right there, that's us. But that big jug over there, this, this jug here actually has less water than when we started, right? But this is God. This represents God and the joy that He has is infinite, eternal. The joy that He can give you is overflowing. Right? I was going to play that video, uh, Happy by Pharrell, but I, but I couldn't find a free download. <laughs> so that's okay. I don't have that much time. So just imagine, this is infinite. And He just keeps on flowing and flowing and pouring that overflowing joy in you. Who doesn't want that, right? Well, we can always go to God and He can give us overjoy. Overflowing joy. If you would just 
added a new word to the Merriam-Webster's dictionary, which overjoy. And this can be your life. This can be your life. Now I want to invite you. God, keep doing that. God's joy is overflowing. He's filled with joy. In fact, one of the fruit of the Holy Spirit is joy. Remember, the first three is love, joy, peace. Joy is a fruit of the Spirit. Actually, there's only one fruit. It's got nine aspects. Joy is that one of that part of that fruit. And if you have the Holy Spirit, you have joy. And that kind of joy is not the kind of happy that Pharrell was talking about. It's the kind of joy that's overflowing. But it's in Jesus. The disciples experienced that overjoy when they experienced Jesus. When they encountered Jesus. When Mary saw Jesus at the tomb. And right now, some of us are probably at the tomb. For we're in despair. For we're sad. For we're, we don't know where we're going. We don't know what the future holds for us. Maybe you don't have a job. Maybe you're looking for one. Maybe you're struggling through a relationship. And you're in a dark place. Maybe you just don't know what God has for you. And you're kind of wondering, why on earth am I in this discerning wilderness? in the middle of the Mojave Desert? And the answer is, it's in Jesus. And that encounter with Jesus that Mary had, that encounter with Jesus that the disciples had, that encounter that Thomas had later on, it's what changed him. See, renewal is a life-changing encounter with Jesus. It continues in community and it also overflows. That's the kind of renewal God wants to give to us. It overflows. Amen? It's an overflowing joy. Turn to your neighbor and say, I want that overflowing joy. And that overflowing joy drives the disciples to want to share that joy. It's overflowing. You can't contain it. What do you do when, when a hungry person finds bread? Right? You want to eat it, but if there's too much, you want to go tell another hungry person, hey, there's more bread over here. Let's go eat it. Right? Same thing. The joy is overflowing. It's endless. You want to share that. And if, and if the Holy Spirit fills you with that joy, you just want to share it. So it's overflowing joy. Amen? Amen. And this is what this day is all about. And Jesus came, Jesus wants to encounter you, and Jesus wants to fill you with overflowing joy. Amen? Amen. So if you believe that, and want to receive that overflowing joy, I want to invite you to stand up. going to pray. And then we'll have communion. Now, this, is, this table here is an invitation to that overflowing joy. When we partake of that, we're actually saying to Jesus, Jesus, I want you. I want that overflowing joy. I want that eternal life. I want you in my life. And sometimes we may have been Christians before. We may have been born again before. But we need a renewal. We need a revival. And if you've never accepted Jesus before, you've never come to the place where, um, where you receive that eternal life and you receive that overflowing joy, well, this is...